In September of 2012, a 53-year-old woman named Linda Ortega was with her brother, Eddie Huff, while hiking and camping in the forest near St. Joe, Arkansas. Linda's brother was conveniently teaching her survival skills when the two somehow became separated. Already, the story gets a bit confused, as each individual seemed to have a different view on exactly what happened to cause this. Eddie was able to make it home and when questioned, insisted that he thought Linda was safely at a relative's house. However, this information proved incorrect. Linda was nowhere to be found. Linda was declared missing and a large-scale search began with many responders. A whole five days passed during the search, making the sheriff's office believe they were likely searching for a body rather than a living person. On the fifth day, however, search and rescue stumbled upon Linda wandering alone in the woods. The county sheriff reported that Linda had some cuts and bruises, and that when she first came out of the woods, she, quote, wasn't quite about her head. Linda told the police that she tried to use the survival skills her brother had taught her, and had subsisted on berries, watercress, hazelnuts, and drank water from the creek during the five days that she was lost. During the cold nights, she was forced to sleep huddled up on the ground, just hoping rescuers would find her. Her story took a turn for the strange, however, when she said that there were times that she had seen other hikers in the area, and had called out to them for help. But they just continued on, and it seemed as though they could not see or hear her. Other times she said she had seen shadowy people watching her and hiding in the bushes, whom she described as very weird. The next thing Linda knew she was being discovered by the search and rescue team. When asked how she gotten lost in the first place, Linda seemed slightly confused just as her brother was, but thought that her brother had gotten injured and that she was trying to get help for him. What exactly happened to cause both Linda and Eddie to become lost, we'll never know. But it is strange that they both were disoriented and had very different ideas about what was happening. This type of separation event is all too common in missing persons cases. Police attributed the stranger parts of Linda's story to hallucinations, probably induced from ingesting toxic berries as well as dehydration. But we know that Linda had water because she was near a creek. A doctor who looked at Linda after she was rescued found her to be in good health despite the fact that she had been missing for five days straight. This is particularly interesting because most berries that are hallucinogenic are typically also quite poisonous to humans, especially one in a distressed state such as Linda must have been. Yet there was no indication that she had eaten anything toxic other than the assumed fact that she must have hallucinated all of the strange things that she had claimed to have seen. Also, it would seemingly take quite a potent hallucinogen to make someone see hikers that completely ignore them, or shadow people hiding in bushes. Linda didn't report any nausea or stomach pains that commonly come from ingesting such toxic plants and also didn't mention seeing any geometric shapes or colors that are typically seen when experiencing such hallucinations. It does make sense why this is the official explanation, however. For if what she claimed to have seen was in any way real, it would only open up a bag of questions for which we have no rational answers. One could put forth all manner of theories, from time slips to portals and parallel dimensions, but these would only be guesses. As with many stories of the missing, all we have to go on is one person's account of what they say they saw. It does merit special consideration, however, because all too often nothing is found. Nobody to tell a story, no one to say what happened. This makes Linda's story and those like it unique and worthy of noting. Linda herself seemed content to believe that she experienced some vivid hallucinations. And why wouldn't she? When it comes to being able to sleep at night, this explanation is far better than believing something as paranormal as being invisible to other hikers who can't hear you 
or hear your cries for help, while somehow being watched by strange, shadowy beings that silently stare from the depths of the forest. Until next time, thanks for watching.